So this is really nice. They put up this sunshade uh, since I completed this mural. And that's gonna give me a nice shady spot to uh, do some final touches because I was looking back at the footage of real sunflowers that I got. You know, this is sunflower season here where I live. And I got all of this nice footage of sunflowers, but you know, that's kind of a dangerous thing for me to do, especially after I paint the picture because I can't stand seeing things that I missed. So I saw some things that I missed and I'm gonna add those in. Okay, now this is all the color I need right here. These four colors. And so with these four colors, and that is, uh, pure black, any kind of black you can find. I just like to use the blackest black I can find. Maroon, this is the color of rust, and some some call it red oxide. It's, you know, you, you just look for any color that looks like this because I just need to be able to make brown, reddish brown, any kind of brown I can make with these colors. Of course I need yellow for that flower. This is the brightest yellow I could find and the brightest white that I can find. So these four make all the colors I need for this entire flower. Now, that's with the exception of some bright red that I used when I did the higher, uh, more orange colored flower. You can see that one's a little brighter orange up there, so I used some primary red to mix that orange. No big deal. I'm gonna show you how I use these to mix my different kinds of colors. And I'll go through those one by one. I have two colors of shadow for the yellow petals, I have two colors of highlight for the yellow petals. And then I just kept the leaves simple since for the, mo they're, uh, for the most part facing the same direction. I just did a, a uh, light color and a shadow color and er everything in between depending on how much in the light these leaves are according to how I positioned them. And the same with the big stems. All of the greens I, I did like that. Okay, now let's go through the colors and I'll mix them right, right on this mural to show you. Now, as a general rule, I want to uh, use brown to make shadows on yellow because black turns it green. So I'm going to uh, use brown, but that will either be a more gray shade of brown or a more colorful orange or, or reddish shade of brown. When yellow is illuminated from uh, the opposite side that you're viewing, so when light shines through a yellow object like this, the pattern is it gets more toward yellow as it gets brighter and goes more toward red as it gets darker. So the darker that that backlight shining through the petal becomes, the darker that becomes, the more the color shifts toward red. So imagine the flower in a very dark setting and there's just a little bit of light shining through it from the other side. I would shift that yellow the most toward the red. So let me just get to the point and I'll show you how by making a brown that's more orange colored, I'll make this petal twisting and we'll see the underside of it just by using that, that shade of brown. I'll put it right here. This shadow color is typically seen on the undersides of things that are uh, facing away from the sky. So we've got, we've got the sunlight on top of the petal and the sky on top of the petal. So, so the light's coming through it and we're seeing the light go through it and I'll just put this rusty color, I'll put that maroon with the yellow and it's, it's like, man, uh, mostly, mostly yellow on this because the yellow is not very potent at all. It doesn't cover very well. So the other pigments very quickly take over the mix. So I start with the yellow. When I'm mixing colors, I like to start with my weakest color and then very carefully add the darker colors to it. Okay, so you can see this immediately starting to look like this petal kind of has a twist in it. Now, if I want a darker shadow, that one, I didn't add any black. So this kind of creates a twist on this, on this petal just by adding a little bit of that rusty color. But now let's say that I want something much darker. Let's say it's closer to the base of the flower and there's less light coming through, but still some light coming through. So then maybe I add some black as well to make it darker. So I think, uh, let's, let's find a good spot. I, I think it'd be much darker here and, and I already have that spot. So, so let's do a darker color. Okay, so as I get darker, I'm 
changing the ratio a bit. It's not quite as heavy on the yellow because when I add black, it's going to turn any yellow green. So the, the red stops the green from happening, but I just, I just need to know. Whenever I'm adding black, it's less yellow. Uh, unless I'm looking for a green, which I am when I do all of the leaves. Okay, so now we gotta add more of our other colors. That got real dark in there. Let's add the, let's add the maroon and let's grab some more yellow. We need that in there. Okay, so here is a good shadow color for all of my shadows across the top, my darker shadows across the top. You can see some on those very top petals. See where I have some petals overlapping and it leaves the dark space. Uh, you know, where, the, where it's, you know, I put shadows like on the back side. So, so those are all facing down and they don't have skylight on them and skylight actually discolors those. So now let's talk about the other shadow color. Any surface that starts facing up toward the sky gets discolored because of the bluish, the bluish light. And so whenever you mix colors of light, you get a grayer result. It's less colorful. So I'm gonna go back to this leaf and I actually think this could be uh, improved right here. This petal, I'm gonna turn that shadow more gray because I, I kind of imagine that not really facing down but just sideways and maybe not so much light coming through it. So let's make it more gray and add it to this dark brown. So now you can see that kind of pink color that results. So I'm just, I'm just gonna gradually adjust this until I see a gray brown. You know, this is, this is, you know, I've got the light kind of behind it or, or however that is. So, and then I'll even lighten it as I go down, down here to make that petal seem like it's kind of flipping up a little bit. So I know that me, me uh, standing here mixing colors, you know, from primaries can get confusing. So I just want to, I just want to re, explain that this is my gray brown versus my orange brown. Those are the two kinds of brown and then it's just a matter of getting there with my four colors and deciding how dark. You know you can hear the cars zipping by as I'm doing this. This is this has been a fantastic thing for this coffee shop. This mural facing all the traffic driving by. Uh, business picked up right after painting it. Now you can see that starting to look like a shadow in front of that bright leaf that does not have light shining through it. So look at the difference. This looks like light is shining through it. This looks like light is not shining through it. It's not the darkness, it's the color that causes that effect. Okay, so now, I think, I think it'd be good if I kind of softly, softly changed that, uh, this transition, you know, let's make this transition a little smoother, a little more gradual. Let's go like this. Got a bit of our brighter, more colorful yellow in there. This yellow just does not cover it all. So that. And now it kind of looks like it more gradually bends into the light. I'm going to use some of that same shadow color and I'm going to use a, a lighter version of it to put a cast shadow right here where maybe these petals, this flower is making a little bit of a shadow on these petals. You can see that this color is not nearly as vibrant orange as the other shadow color that I used. And so I think that this is going to work real good. And I'm just going to make it lighter than my darkest shadows in here. But you know, speaking of these shadows, I probably made these more reddish than I want to because I don't really want a lot of light shining through that underside, but some of it's just for effect. So let's go right here, make it, now let's go a little, little bit lighter. Added some more yellow. Okay, so here is my more grayish color to shadow my yellow with. I think that'll be good. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just take this and make some stripes going down. Like this. Let's go here, here, here. And I don't know. I'm just making, I'm just making a not, not so perfect line because these shadows could go anywhere, you know, from 
whatever petals are up there cast in these shadows. It's, it's that shadow on the surface. I feel like I could even add, let's try just a little bit of white. If I add white to an already dark color, it gets more gray. You know, I like to think of white as the lightest gray. Let's go here. A little bit in there, maybe here. Just a touch on the yellow. And bring this all the way down like this. Okay, now it's time for my two colors of yellow and that's gonna be similar. I'm gonna have one color that is more colorful, more yellow, and then I just add white to the other. Now I like to separate these as two kinds of colors because the white represents light bouncing off of the yellow, like blue skylight. Things that discolor it make it a little bit less yellow because it's, again, adding other colors. When they mix, it gets more like white. So I get this look where it looks like the sun is really, really just blasting on the top of that by using the white on top of the yellow. It's just a light yellow, but it gets less yellow the more white I add. Now, I've got all kinds of intermediate colors. This is my brown mixing with my yellow, and this is an intermediate color, but just to understand all those to be some combination of these four basic kinds of colors. So now I'm gonna put some bright, bright yellow in here. So let's do pure yellow right here. This is a good spot. And actually, I'll just leave that pure yellow. I love that look. It's facing toward me, but it's not in direct sunlight so much that I want to put like the bright white reflecting as much. But maybe in here where I want it bending up toward that light, maybe in here I use a little more white than the yellow. So this is my white yellow to get that extra boom, that pop where it just kind of bends toward the light. Okay, so again, I'm just coming through. It's either pure yellow or white and yellow, depending on how vibrant, how bright I want this to look. So this I want real, real bright, real direct sunlight. Blowing out the color a little bit. There we go. Nice and bright. Lots of yellow coming up to this shadow. yellow right there. Let's get just a touch. That was too much of that red here. Let's let's just go ahead and use this while we've got it. Since it's too much, let's just put it here and here and here all along these shadows so I don't have to do it again. Like that. I can prepare myself for success here. Put that orange, more orange color anywhere that I think the yellow might overlap and create too much of that greenish gray color. There we go. Okay, then my bright yellow. Let's go yellow right there. Some white right in there. I can do this with a little brush, big brush. You know, the colors work the same no matter what the scale is. Because when I do small paintings, I use small brushes that are these same shapes. Let's get more yellow in here. And then blast that with some white. So the middle of this flower, it's really the same principle. The darkest areas are pure black. I just did black dots to make shadows look like deep, deep uh, uh, holes in between the, the texture of the flower. And the reason it has that three-dimensional look is because it's using that shifting hue it goes uh, more toward the red as it gets darker. So my brightest colors in here are the yellowest. They get more red as they move toward the dark brown. So I have my lighter, more yellow browns. And as they get darker, they become more reddish browns. And as they hit the darkest, then they just become pure black. So following that shifting hue is how I get that three-dimensional look to the middle of this flower as well. Okay, now it's time to do the colors on the leaves. I'm going to do something I don't normally do, and that is work in direct sunlight because I have to leave town. This is my last day to work on this mural, and I really want to show you how I did this. I want to fix the vein pattern. I noticed when I was looking back at my footage that the vein pattern, there's one main vein that comes more along the, the length of the leaf, like the middle one. So these veins I want to go a little more out sideways, 
and one vein coming from each side, like, you know, so we have one, two, three, like a bird's foot. To make the spaces in between the veins, I just make my brighter green, so yellow, a little bit of black makes it green. Now, as I get brighter, when I'm using this method, I have to use more yellow as I get brighter. So I use a lot of yellow and a tiny bit of black to get that brighter part of the leaf, and I'm just making a gradient. It's just gonna be brighter right here in order to create the look of an area that goes up and back. So when I move to a darker green, I'm gonna use a little heavier black ratio. So now this green has a higher percentage of black. It's a, it's a higher percentage of black, lower percentage of yellow. Yellow and a teeny weeny bit of black. That stuff's skinning over quick. It's got a rubbery skin on the top from being in the sun. They add lots of white. There we go. And then we just take this line. Maybe you don't see it as much up here. Down here it goes. What we care about in a picture is how the colors compare to each other. And if I use really bright greens, my yellows are no longer as bright as they look in nature. When you look at, at pictures, when you look at the real thing, we have really bright reds, yellows, vibrant flowers compared to the greens. And so you always wanna be mindful of what are your brightest colors that you need to show up in a picture so that you can appropriately tone down the other colors. So if I wasn't doing a bunch of bright flowers, maybe I would use a brighter green. But in this case, black and yellow is the perfect balance to make sure that my flowers stay real vivid in comparison. I took a break and let the sun go down and so now it's gonna be a lot easier for me to paint without that uh, hot sun drying my paint super fast and heating up my, <laughs> heating up my neck. And so I'm trying to put the finishing touches on this leaf right here and you know, it's the shape is just bothering me. So I'm gonna fiddle with it and hopefully the answer will come to me. I'm gonna try tilting the the veins I've been staring at it for a while now and and I feel like the the way the veins in it are hitting the edges of the leaf you know if the perspective is, is tilted this way like it is I want it coming this way if I want them to come and be lower than the veins on this left side because the perspective is turning it this way and, it, and I think maybe you know maybe I'm just guessing I'm guessing my way through it Like changing the angle of the veins really helped out the shape of my leaf, at least to me. And so now I'm just gonna uh, just perfect the colors. I'm thinking I could get a little darker, and the darker I can get with the leaves, the better, really, because darker leaves means brighter flower in comparison. Mm -hmm. 